So hi, I'm Sean. Hi, Sean. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Sartak on IRC and other places. If you see me being snarky, just, just now you know who I am. Um, so I'm going to be using a terminal for most of my talk. So if you run that command in your terminal, then you should be able to watch my terminal on your screen. And that might help your neck a little bit. So you're not craning over to see the screen. Oh, that's wrong. So this is, this is going to like root my machine or something. No. <laughs> you have got a new zero day in Telnet. <laughs> that server is actually posted in Russia, so maybe you should be careful. This is cool. So, um, there are other people on the on the uh, yeah, yeah, so You can watch them. I pressed the wrong yeah, button. So. I'm now watching NetHack. <laughs> if you hit the Q button, it'll go back to the menus. No, it is the Oh my goodness. Oh, sorry. So this is a thing we use. It's pretty cool. It's actually really nice for remote pair programming. Sometimes when I'm programming, I, I throw up a terminal on this, and then people like, tell me when I make that close. Tell me when I'm being stupid. So I'm just going to jump into a live demo. And then I'll let's slide that I promise it'll make it. It'll be good. Um, so, can you guys see that okay? Yes. Yeah. See it in the back? Okay. So I'm going to play some NetHack for 40 minutes. Rock. <laughs> um, so this is NetHack. Many of you have probably seen it before. It's a strategy game where you go into the dungeon and fetch an amulet and bring it back up. It's actually fiendishly difficult. Um, it took me about a year of playing to beat it for the first time. And it was a pretty obsessive year. I mean, the only other thing I was doing was working at a convenience store. And it was just... Yeah, it kind of absorbed my life right here. Sure. So I recommend not playing that hack. Um, same thing, I guess. Um, it's very fun, but it, you won't do anything else until you beat it. So what I recommend instead is you, you use my NetHack bot, which is called Tape. Um, like I mentioned in the beginning, NetHack is about getting the amulet and bringing it back to your god. TAPE stands for the Tactical Amulet Extraction Bot. And that's the kind of humor that nerds like me like. So, yeah. This is playing now. Um, so I guess now I can explain a little bit about that. This at sign is you, the character. Um, you just walk around on the map. Uh, occasionally stuff happens. And you get messages up here. Um, this exclamation point is an item. These brown things are doors. Um, so it's kind of like uh, what's it going to If you play Diablo, it's kind of like this. It's a role playing game. Yeah, it's a role playing game where you have no idea. Yeah. So as opposed to like Zork, where it's all English, this is just um, kind of yeah. So you find a lot of monsters. Do you have auto pick up off? It only picks up stuff it knows how to use. So if it's like a wand of wish, it's going to know how to use it. It does not use wands. So if you've never played the hack before, maybe it's time to go over the other one. But I will talk about that code behind it. Um, it took me a year to beat the hack. I've been working on this for a little over two years now. And it's not even close. So, <laughs> NetHack is actually really hard for a program to play because it's, there's a lot of strategy involved uh, and there's a lot of unknowns. So, a game like chess, um, it's perfect information. So, you always know. You can look in the, look ahead based on where you play, where you think your opponent will play. Whereas with NetHack, it's kind of like discovery. So, we have to explore the map. We have to figure out what items are. That kind of thing. So it's a pretty complicated game. Does he even, even face the, the people? Yep. Nice. He even eats the corpses. That's awesome. <laughs> he doesn't need to wear corpses at all. No. So dangerous corpses you won't eat. 
Um, so this line here tells tells what he's trying to do right now. What about the corpses that gives us the chance to either die or make a wish? Um, I don't know about those corpses. Maybe you think of a different game. Um, what about rates? Mm -hmm. Eat rates. Yeah, I'm sure. Rates give you a level yeah. and you eat them. So they're pretty handy. Um, so right now he's going back up to the altar, and when you go to an altar, you can figure out what it helps you identify it. Um, and the altar is a few levels up, so he's pretty smart about remembering where the altar was. Does he perform sacrifices on the altar? Not yet. That's actually very complicated. Um, you have several steps. You have to pick up the corpse, yeah. you have to walk to the altar, and sacrifice it. And also, corpses are very heavy, yes. so it'll burden them and slow them down. <coughs> uh, so, any more questions about net hack or things Tave does or doesn't do yet? Yes? Is the underlying algorithm a backtracking algorithm? It's actually a very simple um, AI algorithm. It picks the best move each turn. Um, it does what happens if it ends up in a dead end after picking that? Does it go back where it came from? Yeah. So every every turn, it's actually um, So here it shows you where it's headed towards. Um, the dark blue here is saying it's going to the enemy, but the light blue is saying going to a different level. So it it has a bunch of behaviors that it runs every turn and tries to figure out what the best thing to do is. Um, so yeah, any more questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you play that hack, my pick's setting. If not, it's probably boring as so. hell. But I'm going to get into code in a minute. Are you slowing it down for the for the presentation? This is written in Perl with a lot of moose. So that means you install FCQ, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you put it in here, you go faster. Yeah. Um, it could go faster if we make moose faster, or if we. The actual problem is there's so much in direction that it takes a while. Um, we also have to figure out when NetHack is done telling us what just happened. And that's actually more involved than you there. No, just patch it. Patch NetHack? Yeah. We could, yeah. Um, yeah, it's great source code. <laughs> NetHack source code is mostly 20 years old and awful. Um, so this is a special level, but he doesn't care. He just Runs the same behaviors. What's yellow? Yellow? Oh, it's, it's actually how many behaviors have different paths. So, like, right now he has a lot of things on his mind, so we use more colors. Unfortunately, I don't have a way to map the colors to what he, what he wants to do. So we just. Um, the Oracle. <laughs> it is? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I think he did for Excalibur, so that was cool. Um, yeah, so you see, he has Excalibur now. So he has, he, the bot does all right. It's not great. Um, it's gotten down to Medusa a few times, which is like a bunch of level 25 or, or so. That's good. But beyond that, it doesn't know what to do, because Medusa is special. OK. Um, so yeah, this talk is about surviving in the cruel, unforgiving world, and that hack is very unforgiving. Okay. And usually pretty cool. Um, Did you pick up any pets? Pets? No. It's actually hard to distinguish pets from enemies. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it'll actually attack peaceful monsters, because so there's no way to tell whether a monster is peaceful just by looking at the map. Uh, except shopkeepers. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna leave that running. So we'll check on it a little bit. Does it uh, does it try to identify creatures? Um, usually, it's obvious what creature is because it's a color and a, a letter. There are some collisions, like Dwarf King and Master Mind Player, which is um, I do. can be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I don't nice. think it can identify. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is actually a really nice problem. 
So because it's deciding what to do every turn without any prior knowledge, it can easily get confused and oscillate like this. It's like a game of life. <laughs> so usually what breaks it is a monster coming into view. So we'll decide to do He actually can survive a long time without starving because he can pray and eat all his food. So NetApp has a pray command that lets you get out of basically any dangerous situation. Once. Unless you pray more than like twice in a row. Yeah, it keeps track of when yeah. how long it's been since the last prayer. Does it know to throw things at unicorns to give it stuff? It does. It does throw weapons, but not gems at unicorns. If you never played NetApp, you're probably like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but um. Everyone knows what throws gems at the unicorn. Yes. Okay. Um. This is like 11,000 lines of code. Uh, we've been working on it for a while, and NetHack is pretty complicated. So we do what we can. Do you have any competitors? <laughs> yes, actually. There, there's another bot called SAIPH. S-A-I-P-H. -S it stands for something else. I don't have it installed either. <laughs> We don't have to look at the NetHack code much because there's so many spoilers, which are basically English transcriptions of the NetHack code. So like, we don't need to read the code, we can just read the spoilers, which tell you everything you need to know anyway. I can't think of the last time I had to look at the code, but I'm sure other, other contributors have. We have like four main contributors, including me. I started this whole crowd. Um, so I guess I can leave you with a useful lesson, which is, <laughs> um, don't get addicted to NetHack. Yeah, besides don't get addicted to NetHack. Mm -hmm. Use this instead. It's more fun to watch. So if you haven't done any terminal type of programming, you might not understand, or you might not know how this actually works. Like, how do you get the color green to display on your terminal? And um, how to update just parts of the terminal. So I have a point. I'll get to it. <laughs> I'm not just um, stalling for time. Stalling for time. Um, so if you play that hack, you you kind of walk around, uh, kill pops. So I used a command called ttyrec, which lets you record a terminal. It's actually the same thing that's running the, the service I had you guys download it into. So if you look at that, um, so you see, um, here's me picking my character. There's this 1B character, which is um, backslash E in Perl. There's some weird commands, or weird text. That's all. Um, Virtual terminal with C codes. Um, so when we were first starting out writing that bots, all we did was we looked at this and we tried to figure out what to do. So we had the fox attack us. So we would see that the fox attacked us, and then we would try to react without looking at the map because you can't really see the map in this. That's kind of putting your bot in a disadvantage. We were young and dumb. This is 2005. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for way too long. So, um, we, So we would, if you look at the map, you can see that there are eight directions around you. So we would attack in one direction, see what the response was, attack in another direction, oh, see what God. the response was, attack in another direction, until we hit the fox and we keep hitting that direction. So that was the state of the art circuit in 2005. And then I discovered, um, yeah, 
Pro module. <laughs> <laughs> so you give it some text, which is that uh, escape code written crap that we saw earlier. And it gives you a nice um, map of things to look at. So all of a sudden now we can look at the map. We can, we can explore instead of randomly walking. Uh, we can actually attack <clears throat> boxes instead of trying to figure out where they are. So that was, that was pretty good. <laughs> So the lesson is use CPAN. Yeah, uh, that's one of my lessons. Use CPAN. Don't just, don't just use regexes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were breaking apart VT one hundred two. No, we're just looking for oh. a message that matched byte or attack or something. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. We we're, we've gotten better. <laughs> so here's like a woodland elf and That's pretty nice. Did you ever try just doing a split on backslash e or? You, you could, but it wouldn't really help you because, I mean. No, I just was wondering if you had gone down that particular brick wall. We could just look at the entire entire string. Mm. So. Um, I'm curious, how many of you actually played NetHack? OK, so maybe half of you. Do you agree that you shouldn't play NetHack? <laughs> Anyone here goes far enough to actually play Dungeon? <laughs> The original game, the oh, Fortran. Like, that's like level, level like ten or something. You're in a maze of twisty little passages, mm -hmm. oh, all Rogue, alike. Yeah, Rogue was the original game that was like this with an overhead map, but Dungeon, I guess, is something else. It was written in in Fortran on, on a PDP in nice. 64K, and you you told it what to do. That's mm -hmm. where the the dwarf throwing the axe at your head and the twisty little passages oh, on like. Okay, you're old, we get it. They're <laughs> <laughs> um, playing that on a TTY. Okay, so one nice thing about this is it's not actually an NetHack bot. Tate is an NetHack bot. It's an NetHack bot framework. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was have a template engine in it. It does not. It's an email, yeah. It does use Twitter. If it has an error or something, it'll use Twitter. How does this get to be Um So do people follow this one? You can have, like, NetHack, you can pick the size of the map. Just make a nearly infinitely sized map. And just have it Twitter where it's at. You can have all these people following it. <laughs> We'll use long bond or, um, God. So yeah, it's there an framework because yeah. I didn't go to go to college and I never took any AI courses. So my my plan was, I'll write the NetHack side of it, and find someone to write the AI side of it. Because this is what I wrote and it's kind of crap. You can see that the oscillation is really bad and all that. So that was my plan, and it actually turned out to influence the design, the, the design in many positive ways. Will it, um, when it comes to a dead end, will it search? Yeah. Maybe it'll happen there. No. Um, so this is the framework. So there's a lot of stuff in it. There's an AI, but it's just... Um, we have an ascend AI, which if you know in a hack, it, the term for winning the game is a sentence. So it just goes up and escapes the dungeon. <laughs> um, we have demo, which is a, a very lightweight AI, just to show you how the AI kind of works. So I'll go through that. Human, which is actually pretty cool. It just lets you control what to do every turn, <coughs> which kind of sounds weird. Why wouldn't you just play that act? But it's actually very handy because um, we have <laughs> we have oscillations. We have all sorts of. Information about NetHack inside the tape, so we know um, we know where we stepped, where we actually stepped on the map. So the color is based on how many times you stepped. <coughs> so if we're walking through this room, we know to go through this this way because there's no traps. Other spaces on this on this room might have traps. <coughs> um, there's also parts of the game where you have to figure out where something is by walking around a lot. So that's kind of handy. Um, we also have a lot of information about your inventory. Um, so we see that it's cursed. 
Yeah, I guess that's interesting. Um, we have spoilers built into it, so you can look at any item. So if you want to see what firebrand is like, you can see that, oh, it does D8 damage. Um, so that's why I would use the human AI, which is kind of a weird oxymoron. Could you, uh, could you write an AI that learns from the human playing it? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of one of the goals, is to have someone really smart build an AI that uses something sane instead of this crap that I've been working on. Uh, so this is the demo AI. I guess I'll show that off. Uh, so you have a steady state AI. Yeah, it just sits there. That's her uh, profile. Okay. Um, so this is the demo AI. This is what it does every turn. It says, if I need to pray, pray. If I need to fight something, fight it. If I need to track something down, fight it. The sand goes down in the dungeon. It's, uh... So um, I didn't mean to talk about my, the, the details of my nanite pods for so long. I actually wanted to talk about the design, because I think it's very cool. Uh, so figuring out what to do every turn is something the AI does. And NetHack does everything, uh, the, the framework does everything else. So it'll keep track of the map, keep track of what you've killed, all sorts of stuff. So, um, yeah, okay. Um, so one thing we've learned in writing this bot is that you use object-oriented programming. <laughs> um, it sounds kind of weird because, I mean, we're all saying use Ruth, it's great. But I mean, really use it. Um, you shouldn't have to repeat yourself ever. Make it a method, that kind of thing. Um, that's actually helped us a lot. Every time we've had a plain string and we upgraded it to an object, the bot got a lot better. So two examples of that are PubSub. Um, so the way that the framework communicates with the AI and inside itself is using PubSub, which is you have a message, you give it to um, a proxy, and then the proxy sends it out to everyone who cares. So um, the, the, the people who listen for the messages and the people who send the messages are decoupled. And that means that you can have the AI listen for any message that the framework cares about, and it turns out to work really well. Because um, it means you don't have to have hard-coded callbacks everywhere and all that. So we use PubSub a lot. How did you implement that? Um, just as a one-off thing. There's, a, there's an object called Publisher, and it keeps track of all the subscriptions. Um, this is all one process. We don't fork or anything. We don't have multi CPU usage at all. So it, it takes about half a second every turn. And I'm sure if we, we made use of all these cores on this thing, it would be much faster. But yeah. <laughs> I, I actually don't care too much about the speed. I think it's fine. But a lot of people do care. They can fix it. So we have a publisher object. And we use Moose. Yay. Um, yeah, there's a lot of crap in here. Whatever. <laughs> so um, PubSub is usually a string message. So you have like, uh, you have a message that says, we move to this tile. And the tile. You know, you pass the title of it. That's usually a string that says moved. And then anyone who cares about the moved message can subscribe to it. So something that keeps track of where you stepped would listen to that, for that message. So do you not have um, like defined channels? Like even like Yeah, I mean, every, every message is a channel, really. And not every message, every message type. Right. So moved would be a channel. And everyone who wants to subscribe to that channel can. So. This lets us um, decouple the framework so that other various parts don't need to care about other parts. They just say, tell me when the bot moves. And the AI can also subscribe to these messages. So it says, tell me when I move. Um, there are a lot of messages. Every time something pops up on the top here, an English message, we, we generate a few messages. 
that's how the AI listens for, for messages uh, from the heck. So right now it's, it's a little bit faster than the rat. So we'll back up and try to throw weapons at it. So I think that's pretty cool. It's kind of like, <laughs> so um, one thing we did is that we had these channels that are just name strings. We upgraded those to objects. So every message is an object. And I got the inspiration from Pierce Colley, who's this awesome programmer, very British. Um, it's called, the pattern is called announcements. So it's kind of like PubSub except you have objects. And the benefit is, because it's an object, you can call methods on it. And other people can look at what methods have been called on it. So for example, you can have, uh, let's see. Uh, trying to look for something that's interesting. Okay, so here we have an announcement that says we, we moved to a different level. So we have two attributes, what level we were on, what level we're on now. Um, so that's kind of Nice. I mean, it's an object now instead of just the string level change. Is every square on the map also an object? Yep. It's actually, oh god, this is using so much memory. <laughs> um, we track so much information on every tile. So this is uh, looking at an individual tile. So we have a list of items, things that we killed on it, last time we stepped on it, all sorts of stuff. We have two pages of like, attributes. So this is using a lot of memory. I don't care. Um, I don't think Adam Kennedy is going to run this anymore. Uh, so it uses more memory to find the code. Yes. Uh, so one nice thing about announcements is you can call methods on these objects. This is when a monster grabs us, so we, we can't move the until we deal with that. So we have a, uh, a grab attribute which says, are we now grabbed or are we not grabbed? So this is generated when, when the grab stage needs to send us. So these are messages that looks for and sends us as announcements. One nice thing about this is you can call me I keep saying this, but <laughs> I get distracted and don't finish. So you can call, this is an object, you can call methods on this object. And other people can look and see what you call. So you can say, you could say, um, we're grabbed, so you should do something about it. So we can send a message to anyone saying, uh, we're grabbed. And then you could say something like, OK, I'll deal with it. So then everyone else can say, oh, someone else is dealing with it. I don't need to care. Um, I wish I had a better example. So you, would have, so you could have basically two different AIs uh, cooperating, they're handling different things. I didn't think of that. You could, though. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. This is actually what I'm talking about. So we have a, a query announcement which says, I'm going to draw some items. Everyone tell me what you want, want me to draw. So everyone can, you can do some kind of voting, whatever you want to do. So this says, use this one to select the goal. So that handles all the logic of selecting parts of the list that we need to draw. Um, I think this is really nice. You could say things like, you, you could have whatever logic you want. So maybe the AI will say, no, actually I don't want to drop anything. And then everyone else says, you could like cancel the announcement so no one else can do anything. Um, the, the, the example that Pierce call uses, I think, is we're doing a uh, web framework kind of thing, and we have a database. We're sending an announcement to say, OK, we're going to update this record, and someone can cancel it. Then send another announcement that says, OK, we updated the record. 
here's the old value, here's the new value. So that's really what I wanted to talk about in this talk. I think it's uh, really awesome. And it's obviously applicable outside of NetHack bots. So something to think about. OK. Um, oh, cool. So every turn it decides what to do. No, oh, you got grabbed. Cool. Whatever. So every turn it decides what to do. The AI, the AI returns a string which says, run this net effort. But like I said earlier, every time we upgrade from a string to an object, the bot gets a lot smarter. So we have we upgraded from strings like um, D for draw or um, pound pray to pray. We have objects now, and those objects have a lot of logic in them. So, uh, so you can dispatch complex uh, actions, basically? This doesn't actually do complex actions. That's part of the, that's the AI's decision okay. to do. This is just, these actions are, we're running an individual net account. So, um, okay, so this is a applying an item. Uh, basically, some of the items can use the apply command. So, when you want to apply an item, you say, you tell NetHack to use the A command. If you use Vim or VI, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like, it's just a string of alphabetic characters. So, when NetHack says, okay, what do you want to apply? We say, apply the item that the AI selected. And later, when we get the results, if NetHack says nothing happens, then we can, we can continue to do stuff. So in NetHack, when you apply a unicorn horn, which fixes ailments, if nothing happens, then we know that we don't have any of the ailments. So that's an example of how we upgraded from a string to an object, and now we have much better logic. Maybe I should be louder. <laughs> um, what is that? Thing? Yeah, we have a bunch of weird logic. Like if we 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 apply an item, we get a trapdoor message. That means we have, we use the pickaxe to dig down. Like why would we have that logic? I don't know. Um, do I have any time left? I think I have ten minutes. Eight minutes. Seven okay. minutes. Is there anything you guys want to see in particular, or just? Looks like we ate a leprechaun. Yeah, we did. Um, he just crashed. <laughs> Oops. So, we do a lot of logging. That's another reason why it's slow, I think. Maybe not. I mean, logging should be fast. But we can we can look at... Um, let's look at the arrow log, because that's just what happened. Okay, so it says... I'm uh, iterating endlessly and making no progress. That means I just really got confused. Um, that's trying to parse that head. So, whatever. I don't know what happened, I don't really care. <laughs> uh, so yeah, another another way we make, make use of object-oriented programming is whenever we have... The head is very complicated, it's so like... Um, some monsters are, have a lot of logic in them. <laughs> so um, we have a, a method on the monster object <laughs> uh, called, is it a shopkeeper? And this is all the logic we have for it. So if um, shopkeepers and nurses share the same color and glitch so you can't distinguish them. So we say if we've seen a nurse recently, it's probably a nurse, <laughs> which is <laughs> awful. Um, uh, we also say it's not a shopkeeper, it's outside a shop, which isn't strictly true. The shopkeeper can't leave the shop if it's pissed off at you. But we figure at that point you're probably dead anyway. So <laughs> shopkeepers are actually very tough in the neck. Um, yeah. So instead of having, we have this these methods so that the AI doesn't need to care about the, the bots, the bots, the, the frameworks. Um, 
maturity, I guess. So this, like I said, this check is awful because it's easy to get confused. If there's a nurse and a shopkeeper, then <coughs> we're dead. So when we, we improve the framework to have proper monster tracking, so we can say, last turn this was a nurse, it's probably still a nurse. So we can eventually improve this. And then everything that checks this method, this shopkeeper, gets smarter, including the AI and all that. I mean, that seems like it's obvious, but I don't think enough people take advantage of, of naming behavior like this. I mean, it's the core of OO, but I don't know. I feel slighted by people not using it. So, any more questions about uh, the moth or anything? Have you found any particularly smart person to be AI? There's a lot of smart people in the channel. I'll say that. <laughs> um, no, we don't have anyone who's actually taken any AI classes. I mean, that's something we'll run those people's houses and multiply them on the wall crowd. Sounds good. Uh, the version on CPEN is once, maybe even a year old. It's on GitHub. <laughs> um, it's actually annoying to release because we're perfectionists and it's hard to release buggy software. Like, there's a bug in this that caused the crash earlier. And I should probably fix that before I release it. But. Uh, what would I do? Oh, right. Stick the word experimental in the polling date letters and ship it anyway. Yeah. yeah. All, all software is bugging. Software is made of bugs. Yeah. Well, and yeah. There's an old line that uh, perfection is the, the enemy of good. good. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to talk about, but unfortunately it's a bit rotted, so I can't really show it to you. Uh, Back in Yapsi, Chicago, the second one, so I think 2008, I was working on a, a web frame, a web front end to NetHack using this. Um, they used the continuity module, which is awesome. Uh, it was actually really nice, but unfortunately it kind of got bit rotted, so mm -hmm. I can't check it. But it was a bit rotten. I know. I'm just a bad programmer. I don't uh, so it showed you a web page with the NetHack map on it, and you could select what to do. I was eventually going to make a party game out of it, where people kind of voted what to do next. Then I realized that would be a pretty lame party. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Eat the way we're at. Uh, what else? We have a few AIs in development. That's not the one. This is the AI I've been showing you, behavioral. So this is kind of what it knows how to do. So every turn it decides what to do from all those, those choices. Uh, there's another AI called Planar. But unfortunately, I'm not even going to tell you why you can't run it, because you're just going to laugh at me. <laughs> right, you have to tell us that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just try to run it. And We use stuff like Storable to make sure that when you save that hack and reload it, it still works. Okay, so it crashed. Nice. Uh, that's all I want to see. Oh, it doesn't tell me why. I can't read the fucking screen anyway. Just tell yeah. us. So the reason is I'm running 5.8.9 <laughs> and Planar uses a lot of 5.10 uh, syntax. Okay, so I think I have like a minute left. Um, any last questions? Anyone want to work on this? <laughs> if I had time. Yeah, that's why I don't work on it anymore. So my eventual goal is is to make <coughs> make Tate play this game. <laughs> this is a Japanese translation of that act. Unfortunately. Except the ASCII character just the last game. Yeah, they could add like a lot more monsters, but they have. <laughs> They make the monsters easier to identify. Yeah. What was he done? I think you should consider genericizing your pub sub chunk. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Pierce has a module called announcements, I think. Okay. But he, he doesn't really work on it. Okay. Um, maybe I'll pick that up and kind of finish it for him. 
Because I, I, I really do believe it's awesome. So yeah, uh, thank you for listening.